We are here today, a broad-based coalition, with one specific goal, and that is to end the siege of Gaza, the barbaric, barbaric rather, <laughs> if you will. Human rights catastrophe is taking place in Gaza. Many of you have seen within the last few days, tens of thousands of civilians of Gaza pouring through, raffling through the broken walls that had maintained and corralled like animals, refused the basic necessities of life, food, medicine, the right to work, and just the fundamental human dignities that any human being deserves. We've seen it within the last few days. Sadly, I must say, sadly, also as an aside, it's a shame that the American media has taken so long to even give any coverage to this catastrophe that's been going on you know, for the longest time in Gaza. But now, most recently, we've seen people going through this hole, this wall, trying to get the basic fundamentals of life. Things are so simple as just some candles because the Israelis have you know, tightened their noose around of the people of Gaza. This is something that's remnants of medieval madness, where indeed you siege a civilian population and you deliberately starve them out. And the other traumatic part about this is that our government is complicit with the situation. And another situation that also involves it, uh, the fact of the matter is that even Arab governments have not been vocal and are strong enough in terms of lifting the siege. Of Gaza. Certainly, um, it was because of the people in the streets in Egypt that actually uh, allowed uh, people to even go in for these few days and get the basic necessities. You know, a few days ago, we uh, celebrated Dr. King, and we always hear about the dream of Dr. King, the dream of the dignity of the human family. Now we see if we juxtapose this dream of Dr. King, that it is a nightmare for the people of Gaza. Indeed, it is a nightmare for the people of Palestine, Palestine, who have been for over 60 years under occupation, dispossession, and oppression. And it is time for it to end. We feel fundamentally, as a coalition, there are some things that we can do and that we will do. One of the things that's happened today, today is Friday, and we've called for, along with our other partners, coalition partners, answer being one of them, a day of action all across America, all across America, throughout the various different mosques in America. The sermons will be dedicated and the prayers will be dedicated to the suffering people in Gaza. In addition to that, there are rallies taking place this weekend all across America. Seattle, uh, in California, both in Southern California, in the Bay Area, also now, most recently, Milwaukee is doing something. There's also a rally in Chicago and other places in New York, both Friday and Saturday in New York, all across America. People are raising their voices and saying to their government that you are complicit, you are part of the problem rather than part of the solution, and we don't want our tax dollars not one dime of our tax dollars used to support this type of brutal occupation. Um, let me conclude by saying that in addition to King talking about a dream, he also spoke very clearly about the penalty of silence. He says there is a time within everyone's life when silence is betrayal. We are determined to raise our voices and not be silent to this brutal, brutal siege of Gaza. Additionally, Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, said that if you see an injustice, you should correct it with your hand, your mouth, or at least to test it in your heart. In this case, we have, beginning with the latter, we detest it with every fiber of our being within our hearts, this barbaric uh, Israeli siege of Gaza and its occupation of the Palestinian people. But also, we are addressing it with our mouths. We're speaking out. We're holding a rally. There's a rally to, to this evening at 4 o'clock in front of the Israeli embassy. 
and as I mentioned before, all across America in front of the Israeli consulates, as well as other places, there are direct action campaigns against this. So we're speaking out and we're using our, our tongue or our mouth. And more specifically, we at the Muslim American Society uh, Freedom Foundation are now calling upon all of our chapters to be collection centers for in-kind, non-food uh, uh, supplies that we will uh, ship to Gaza. We've identified possibly a charity that might be able to get some of these supplies in. So we're collecting uh, across our different centers. We have approximately 55 centers in 35 states nationwide where we're calling upon uh, our members in our community uh, and we're calling upon members of Goodwill and Conscious to donate blankets, uh, medicine supplies, medical supplies, wheelchairs, walkers, and things of that nature. Can you imagine? I saw with my own eyes on one of the, uh, of course I didn't see it on American uh, commercial TV, but I was able to see with the BBC and one of the Arab channels, there was a mother manually trying to do a pump to get oxygen to a child who needed oxygen. So we're trying to ship supplies, non-perishable supplies, into Gaza, and we, we will be collecting uh, them at our center. Article 33 of the Fourth Geneva Conventions forbids explicitly a collective punishment against an entire people. It labels collective punishment as a heinous war crime, and those who conduct and carry out war crimes must be held accountable to international law. The siege of Gaza, the blockade of Gaza, the stripping of an entire people of their right to have all the necessities to sustain life is a form of collective punishment. The Israeli government should be held culpable in accordance with the Geneva Convention. They should be charged with crimes against humanity and war crimes. And the Bush administration, which funds the Israeli government to the tune of $15 million every day, and if it weren't for Bush, if it if Bush were not president, the next president will do the same unless there's a fundamental uh, shift in orientation. That the United States government, too, is aiding and abetting those who are committing crimes that are outlawed by international laws, crimes of collective punishment. Today, uh, we are joining with the Muslim American Society, National Council of Arab Americans, the al Auda Organization, Free Palestine Alliance, activists and civil rights and religious leaders here in the Washington, D.C. community to carry out demonstrations at the Israeli embassy today starting at 4 o'clock, and in approximately 100 cities around the United States. Not highly covered in the U.S. media, but a reflection of the fact that the people of this country are waking up to the plight of the Palestinian people insisting that there be justice for the Palestinian people and holding the U.S. government responsible. Gaza was seized as an act of military aggression 41 years ago, along with the West Bank, along with the Golan Heights in Syria. This occupation that has gone on now for four decades has been condemned by the United Nations, but the United Nations takes no action to enforce its own resolutions. The Palestinian people must be joined by people all over the world if they are to have that which belongs to all people, the right to determine their own destiny, free from occupation. The Answer Coalition thanks the Muslim American Society and all of the people in the country who are railing together today and tomorrow, along with people around the world, to say no to the siege of Gaza, yes to the affirmed rights of the Palestinian people, and to call for an immediate end to all occupation.